This is The Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the Fanatic Club Sport Wheelbase version 2.5. This is actually the third version of the Club Sport Wheelbase, and with each version, there's a whole list of improvements, and once again, that is the case with the version 2.5. Now, the Club Sport Wheelbase is exactly that, a wheelbase on its own. Behind it, you can see I have a couple of the wheel rim options that are available separately, but the wheelbase, the 2.5 version, goes for $4.99, which is exactly the same price as before. The Club Sport Wheelbase version 2.5 is then still compatible with all the Fanatic gear, so the shifters, the handbrake, any of the wheel rims, and the pedals. And in fact, if you use the pedals and an Xbox One compatible wheel rim plugged into the wheelbase, it's then fully compatible with the Xbox One, which is nice. For my testing, I'm going to use two of my favorites. I have the Formula One wheel and the 918 rim from Fanatic, perfect for my testing. Now, when you first start unpacking the Club Sport wheelbase, we are greeted with the usual motivational buildup on the box flaps. Hello, realism, goodbye, toys. And inside the box, you will find a user manual, a couple of different mounting or drilling templates, a power cord, a power supply, some various cables, and the wheelbase in its protective fanatic bag. And when the bag is opened, the new wheelbase is revealed and we get our first look at the new Fanatic Club Sport Wheelbase 2.5. The Fanatic Club Sport Wheelbase version 2.5 actually looks just like its previous versions, the biggest noticeable difference being the engraved logo on the front. The base remains made of aluminum that is anodized in black finish on the face, the bottom, the sides, and the top with the exception of the tinted window that allows the view of the internals moving while in use. The back of the Club Sport base is made of high quality plastic also in black. The face of the Club Sport base has a power button on it that lights up red when turned on. And there are also a series of mounting holes intended for the static shifters or second party button boxes or gauges that are made for the Club Sport wheelbase from third parties. The sides of the Club Sport base are vented for cooling, and there is a fan on the left side. On the back plastic cover, you will find another Fanatic logo, another fan and vent, and the plug-in point for our wiring and extra components to reach the main board. The bottom of the base is also made of anodized black aluminum and has the standard Fanatic triangle mounting holes. You also have the option for the Club Sport mount. This mount reclines the wheelbase 20 degrees and then switches it to the standard Fanatic 4 bolt mounting pattern. Also a carryover or identical to its previous versions is the giant wheel connector or drive shaft of the wheel. It is keyed for the wheel rims and has pass through wiring connection so there are no extra wires going to your wheel rim. This works with a quick release system for any of the Fanatic wheel rims. As I mentioned, the most noticeable difference between the 2.5 and previous versions is the engraved logo on the front. However, the biggest changes were actually done inside of the wheelbase. The version 2.5 has been reworked in several areas to increase its performance. Over the years, Fanatic has put a lot of work into reducing the amount of drag in their dual belt drive system, and the 2.5 is the pinnacle of their work. It is a dual belt drive system that has seen a new wave of freedom and even lower drag than the version 2.0. In this dual belt system, one belt moves from the drive shaft to a secondary pulley that is also connected to the output shaft of our wheel rim. There are also two Hall Effect sensors on this wheel, one on the drive shaft from the motor and the other one on the steering shaft. These shafts and pulleys all turn on heavy duty ball bearings and they use high-end European belts that should last a very long time. The motor within the Club Sport V2.5 is a brushless motor that has an elaborate heatsink on it for cooling. This motor provides up to 8 newton meters of torque at the wheel, which is the same as the V2 model. The electronics that control this motor are brand new to the Model 2.5. These new electronics run at 1000 Hz versus the 500 Hz of the V2. This allows for lower damping in the motor and an even freer moving drivetrain. The Fanatic Club Sport wheel can be tuned or have its settings changed on the fly via the onboard display on any of the wheel rims. 
As I mentioned, the Club Sport wheelbase is a compact design. It measures in at 11 and a half inches or 295 millimeters wide. It is then six and a quarter inches or 159 millimeters front to back with the steering shaft extending another two inches or 51 millimeters beyond that. The wheelbase on its own stands six inches or 152 millimeters tall and using the 20 degree angle mount that raises things up by two inches or 51 millimeters. The Club Sport wheelbase is also fairly hefty, weighing in at about 10 pounds. I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about our industry and what's going on, but I promise you it does relate to the Fanatic wheelbase and it does relate to their new electronics and low drag friction system within it. But if you think about Oculus or VR, these devices really forced the sim or gaming companies in general to really change their graphics to utilize this new technology. Well, lately we've seen so many direct drive wheels coming on the, on the market. These wheels are friction free, super powerful, and don't have that built in damping of the cheap wheels of yesteryear. This changes what the developers can do with force feedback. And to put this in terms of the wheelbase, when the 2.0 version came out, it was very low drag, but the games, the force feedback commands weren't quite ready for that. And they had to electronically build in some damping into the system to get the most to prevent oscillations and unwanted behavior. But things have changed. Things have gotten better. And with that, the new electronics and the new low drag system within this wheelbase can actually be utilized to their best. And it really makes it incredibly smooth, incredibly friction free, and still as powerful as the old one, but being able to deliver those low end force feedback cues that were sometimes missed by built in damping. This was cured by Fnatic through software and the drift mode in order to tame the wheel. And now the better sims have evolved their force feedback for this next generation of wheels. And Fnatic was able to really let this wheelbase do what it was intended to do. And as a result is a smoother, faster, even lighter moving wheel. Now there's so much new programming, so many new features in the new 2.5 version of the wheel that it actually shows up as two controllers in your game controllers menu. But that's not a problem and you can make adjustments using either one, it won't matter. Now, when it came down to installing or mounting this wheel, it was very simple and it was all covered in the Fnatic manuals and the templates. In the case of my R seat, I removed the lower angle mount and went with the triangle pattern of the flat mount. Three bolts later, the wheelbase was mounted to my rig. I then plugged in the power supply into the back of the wheelbase and the supplied USB cable as well. Then I just had to choose my wheel rim and squeeze the quick release, slide the rim onto the keyed position, and release the quick release to mount the wheel rim. I can now turn on the wheel, let Windows recognize it, and watch the wheel go through its auto calibrate startup process. Windows does recognize and identify the wheel, but at this point, we want to download the latest software and drivers for this wheel base. And yes, the base has brand new drivers, so you will have to do this. I am using the drivers at the site for beta driver 273 and that translates into firmware 245. Then install the software and then open up the new Fnatic icon on your desktop. This is now your controller panel. Select one of the two Club Sport wheelbase 2.5 items on that list and go to properties. We now need to update our firmware in the wheel and you can do this on the update tab. Just click on firmware update and it will launch the firmware updater. Once there, you just need to click on firmware update and it will do the rest. When it is all finished, you will watch your wheel reboot once again and then come back with the screen on the wheel menu saying CAL for calibrate. Also covered in the manual is how to resolve this. It is as simple as turning on the tuning menu and pressing in both the left and right sticks. And now we are all set. And because of the onboard tuning menu, which we'll get to later, you can pretty much ignore the controller panel. But you can also test out your force feedback and your display, but all changes are actually made via the onboard menu. 
Let's take a moment to talk about the tuning menu, which has been a longtime feature of Fnatic wheels. It's often overlooked, and it is something that separates it from most of the other wheels available. This tuning menu gives you a selection of options to really tailor the wheel to your needs. You can do it in-game, and you can do up to five different settings, one for each sim. In this menu, you can adjust SEN for sensitivity anywhere from 90 to 900 degrees of rotation. FF for force feedback from 10 to 100. SHO for shock, the strength of the shaker motors within the wheel rims from 10 to 100. ABS, the moment the shaker motor on the brake pedal turns on by percentage of movement from 10 to 100. LIN, linearity, this is the straight line or curved signal of your wheel's input from 10 to 100. DEA, dead zone, from 10 to 100. And DRI, or drift mode, this can be set from minus 5, the most friction or resistance, to plus 5, where the wheel is actually accelerated when turned, which is great for drifting or moments when you have to spin the wheel back to center quickly. We also have a setting for FOR, or force, from 10 to 150. SPR, or spring, from 10 to 150. And then finally, DPR, or damper, from 10 to 150. The drift mode is actually the setting that is going to really affect how freely this wheel turns. And when you think of the direct drive wheels that are coming on the market, one of the things that I love about direct drive wheels is that they can move friction free, which allows them to deliver so much of that low end force feedback and have it actually be felt because you're not being restrained by a bunch of friction in the wheel. And that's an area that Fnatic has really cured this wheel and fixed over the various versions, and it's done with the drift mode. So I just want to show you something to really show you off the drift mode and what it does. I have it set right now at 5, minus 5, which is like basically the full friction of the wheel. And you can see that when I go to spin it, it moves freely in that initial movement, but then it does stop. There is some built-in friction into the wheel. Now if I turn the drift mode down, and let's go down just to, uh, for comparison, let's go down to minus three. So the middle setting in the minus direction. And now you can see it does spin a little bit quicker and it definitely moves a little bit easier, a little more friction free. Now let's go to drift mode again. And I just want to show you something here. If I put this to off, which means there's nothing telling the motor. We're at idle, the motor's on, I'm not in game. There's nothing telling the motor uh, to give power or anything. This is it just sitting idle. And now, oh, I ran into my stop. Now you can see the wheel just spins. I mean, this is as free as it gets, and you saw how much power was on it when we were on Drift 5. I mean, just to, this is a straw. And I can literally just turn, whoops, I want the bump stop. I can literally just turn the wheel with a straw. If I can get my straw in there, it'll, you know. Um, and then further in that direction, just to give you an idea what they're thinking with this drift mode. Let's go to minus, or plus five, and this is a little bit crazy. This is now, instead of creating friction, instead of letting it spin freely, it's actually creating an acceleration or momentum. So once I start the wheel in a direction, you can see the wheel is kind of taking off. So if you're a drifter and you're doing a lot of this kind of stuff with the wheel, you know, with the e-brake and doing that, the drift mode is really good for that. Now, 5 is really is, is very extreme. So even if we take it down just a little bit and do the same thing we did on the positive and go down to drift 3, it's still doing it, but it's just not doing it at the same furious pace. But again, if you're into drifting or doing something that requires a lot of wheel lock to wheel lock movement, this is how you're going to do it. So my setting, my preferred setting on drift mode actually is somewhere in that minus three to minus five range. So minus three is gonna create a little bit of friction, but not too much. This thing's moving very smoothly, very fr freely, but there is just a little bit of built-in friction and that's about where I like it. These are more settings. This is more freedom, more control to really tune the wheel to the way you want it to be. This can be used to cure a modded track. 
This can be used to cure a modded car. This can be used to really tailor the force feedback that you want from any sim that you play. When I first started my testing, I used the stock settings and I used my 918 wheel rim, which is 12 and a half inches or 320 millimeters across, which was gonna give me massive leverage to really test the overall force feedback of this wheel. It is also the perfect rim for some GT car driving. As I pulled down off pit lane, it was very easy to tell that this wheel is very fine. There is no dead zone, and the moment the wheel is turned even the slightest, you can feel the resistance and notice the change in the car's direction. No delay, no lag, no dead zone. And the feeling you're met with in resistance very much feels like the first resistance you get in a real car. This wheel is much more alive than before, and every bump in the road is felt. In Oseto Corsa, on the new Highlands track, you can feel the difference between the smooth road and the cobblestone roads of in-town. Also very noticeable in Oseto Corsa was the moment the rear end of the car starts to kick out when locking up the brakes. You are warned via the force feedback before you see it happening with your eyes. The Club Sport Wheelbase 2.5 is now giving me much more detail of those light effects or the smaller effects in the game. It had always done well with big hits like curbs, car contact or wall contact or extreme changes in the car's handling, but now you feel every twitch, jump and torque of the car as it makes its way through a course. When I switched over the formula rim, this increased the feel of the force feedback. The smaller wheel not giving as much leverage, but at the same time is quicker to turn. The new speed of the V2.5 and the lighter friction allows this wheel to really shine. The wheel feels a little more twitchy when using the Formula One wheel rim, but it also feels that much faster, that much more aggressive when it comes to turning. On turn in, you'll be met with resistance, and when you've exceeded the steering capabilities of the car, you will feel that as well in the wheel. But most importantly, you feel the rear end starting to break loose as soon as it really does in the sim. And this allows you to reduce steering input or reduce throttle to control the car. When hitting the curbs too hard, you feel that hit again. It jumps the wheel, and if they are the sticky kind of curbs that pull your car into them after touching them, you feel that wheel try to pull you the opposite way you want to actually go. It is very usable and very easy to feel the force feedback in the wheel. And despite these much more noticeable forces, and despite this much more active wheel, there are no unwanted oscillations. I was able to let go of the wheel while driving, and this did not cause the car to go out of control as the wheel started bouncing back and forth. It was still tame, and most importantly realistic in its feeling. The power of the wheel is significant, but not overwhelming. After a 30 minute race, you will be a little worn out, a little tired, but at the same time, it's not so strong to be exhausting. This was running at about 10% in-game forces and full strength of the wheel. This was the point right before clipping or loss of force feedback would occur in iRacing. While driving force feedback is very important, so is the overall feel of the wheel and its movement. When driving a new wheel, I am very sensitive to noises or excessive flex or anything that could be seen as an indication of what will happen to the wheel over time. I pulled on this thing, I wrenched it back and forth as hard as I could, and I never heard a single alarming noise, never felt any kind of slippage or anything that would indicate a flaw in this area. Lap after lap, the wheel came through solid, after many different cars, many different tracks, and several different sims. The Club Sport Wheelbase 2.5 performed as expected in each and every scenario. It was a natural feel and required no learning curve at all when it came to getting used to it and setting some great lap times. So as you can hear from what we've talked about, they've taken what was good and made it better. Some of this being on the hardware side of things from researching previous models, using higher tolerances, using better parts. And some of this being on the software side as well and being able to make drivers that really utilize this motor and this drivetrain to its fullest. But to be perfectly clear, let's break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line starting off with the good and that is that this wheel has great force feedback. It's the best looking wheel on the market. 
all metal, very robust, compact design, faster communications than version 2.0, smoother belt system, reduced drag, free moving, tuning menu on the fly, USB saver, all on one plug, great selection of wheel rims, Xbox One compatible with the proper wheel rim. And now onto the not so good, and I have to admit I had a very hard time finding anything to add to the not so good list. So in my limited list I came up with, it is still a little bit pricey, and I think some people might think it's a little bit pricey, and I think others are going to find it very reasonable at $4.99 for an all metal, very high quality force feedback wheel with a great selection of rims. The other not so good is the fan makes a bit of noise when it's actually turning on and trying to cool this thing down. I call it medium, medium loud. Not so loud that it's going to distract you over your sound system, but if you're playing in headphones, others might hear that noise. So let's move on to the bottom line. And I have to say this, when I'm doing a force feedback wheel review in the modern world, I feel like I'm so redundant. I mean, what am I gonna say? The game is meant to tell you when the wheel is moving and when the rear end is sliding, it's gonna go light. When you're getting too much understeer and the front is gripping, it's gonna go heavy. That is the job of every force feedback wheel on the market. And at this point in time, they're all getting so good, they're gonna give you those effects very well. So what does it really come down to? When we compare wheels, the biggest differences end up being the power, the speed, the friction or the reduced drag, how quickly it talks to the system. And in these areas, Fnatic has really stepped things up and they really excel when compared to other wheels in a very similar price range. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about this wheel and as other wheels have continued to come up in price, this one stays the same price with a whole list of improvements. Yes. When a full setup is priced out, it ends up being $1,200 with the expensive Xbox wheel rim and the V3 pedals. But that is not a starter setup by any means. That is a high-end, high-performance setup for a very reasonable price. This wheel is very smooth. It's free turning and this allows the subtle effects to really be felt. This has always been a problem for me when comparing standard wheels to high-end or direct drive wheels. This wheel is bridging that gap when it comes to smoothness or free turning. In fact, I even added a little bit of friction via the software by going to drift mode minus three through minus five versus turning it to off where it would be at its full lowest resistance. Now during my testing, you might've noticed the tuning menus were off in some of those shots. That's because at first there hadn't been an update from Fanataleds or SLI Manager. With this wheel being so new, neither of them had an opportunity to do that yet, but they have since made those updates and you can download the software from either of those companies. One thing I do feel compelled to mention or bring a point to is that I often talk about how a wheel looks and if it's ugly or good looking or whatever. And I have to say the Fnatic wheelbase with its wheel rim is the best looking wheel on the market. It's metal construction, it's black anodized finish, it's newly engraved logo, the viewing window, looking at all the innards of the wheel, even that fine silver line on the edge of the base, all give this wheel style or flair or the looks that will impress your friends and look so proud up on your rig. And one other thing I have to say is if you are racing on an Xbox One, this wheel with an Xbox One compatible wheel rim and any of the Fnatic pedals is absolutely the best option you're going to do on Xbox One. I know it's $1,200, but if you're spending an hour a night playing Forza, playing Project Cars, playing Assetto Corsa, then really $1,200 isn't that much for the best setup you're going to run in the world for that console system. Now with all that said, if you are sitting with a V2 wheelbase, keep calm, don't worry. The V2 wheelbase is a great wheelbase and there's no reason to sell it in a fire sale or go panicking that you have to have this one. Granted, this is a better wheel, it's smoother, it's faster, it's got a better response time, but the V2 is a great wheelbase and you don't need to panic just yet. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Fnatic Club Sport Wheelbase V2.5. I hope you got all the information that you want to know. I hope I've answered any question that you might have. But as usual, if there is a question you have about this wheelbase, I beg you, please email me at sean at thesimpit.com and I'll do my best to answer your question directly. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.